So welcome to St. Luke. Let's give our online worshipers a round of applause. We want to let you know how thankful we are for the Lord to have you with us. If you are listening to us on YouTube, please subscribe to us. If you're Facebook, be sure and like us. Hit that little button that says like us. We hope that many more of you will subscribe to us on YouTube. We really are desperately looking for the numbers to get our numbers up on the YouTube channel. So hopefully you'll, you'll help us as we do our best to be a blessing to you and to your family. This, this whole month, we've dedicated to praying for families. And uh, some of the families, I didn't bring them all, but some of the families who asked for prayer, and I want to give you some of those as you call in or chime in, you can add your name to this list. We hope that hundreds of you will uh, let us know that you need prayer and uh, pray for your family. Last names only. And so we want to add to our list today the Price family, the Taylor family, the, the Anthony family, the Carr family, the Brown family, the Lincoln family, the Davis family, all of those and many, many others. And so we hope that those of you who will uh, let us know that you would like for us to pray for your family will be honored and privileged to do that. One more time, he's allowed us to come together. And uh, it's morning in America. I said, it's morning in America. Give the Lord a hand up for this morning in America. Let's stand and as we lift up the name that's above every single name. One more time, he's allowed us to come together.
Lewis is going to come and read our scripture for us. I hope that uh, some of you who are clustered in the back will move up because that's too many people toward my back. Right, the prayer seats up front. And uh, so we are mindful of what we need to do in order to be please obey the security officers as it relates to what we are trying to get accomplished. Thank you so much. Let's read the scriptures and have a word of prayer. Amen. 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 Good morning, St. Luke's. Good morning. It is another day that we are glad to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. We also want to recognize our radio listeners this morning, if you will, as we come together, sing together, and pray together. Let us turn our Bibles to Revelations chapter 21. We will just read the first four verses. Give you a moment to get there. Okay, still your page is turning. St. Luke's. I know online, you guys are a little faster. Chapter 21, we'll just read verses 1 through 4. And it reads, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And there will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For former things are passed away. That concludes the reading of our scripture. Bow your heads for a word of prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. You got us started this morning, and you moved us on our way. Lord, thank you for letting us leave our dwelling places and come to the house of prayer one more time. God, we're grateful because we realize that some of us were not able to gather here. And Lord, we want you to put your loving arms around them especially those who desire to come here. God, we want to thank you this morning for breath in our lungs. Yeah. Thank you, God, for not letting us be attached to machines that we have to be confined to. Lord, we thank you for not letting our beds be our cooling boards. Father, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, this is a new day, God. So as we revere in you and your marvelous power, we say thank you for this day and everything that we will experience on this day. God, we owe you our very lives. All things come of thee, O oh Lord, and not of our own. So God, we pray to you confidently that you can touch us when we're sick. Lord, you can touch us when we're crooked and make us straight. God, when we are troubled, we know that thou wilt incline your ear to us, morning, noon, and night. God, this is a service prayer. You've heard our names and we called out. Wrap your arms around them. Let them know that you love them and you are keeping them. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and count it done. Amen.
classified it by design. But today, one of them is going to come and bless us as we, we dedicate this song to families. Amen. We want to pray for all of our families. This young lady who brought up in church, she knows nothing else but church. And that's what families need to do is responsible parents and grandparents for their children. Captain, welcome this young person. She's going to come and, uh, and bless us again. Amen. Amen. Where is she? Sister, the Lord. Come on, encourage her in the Lord.
people have spoken. And lots of people have spoken. And we want to pay attention to all of the people because God, we know that everyone is our neighbor. So Father, as he prepares, give him strength, give him courage, give him guidance, give him direction, give him insight, give him discernment, give him a willing spirit to feel your presence and to know that he can do all things through Christ who is his strength. Bless his family, oh God. But they don't know what they're getting into right now. And it's going to be a long road, but bless them to be supported and to be strong. And then bless us to undergird him and Pamela and our government with prayer and fasting and with thanksgiving. Oh, how we praise your name today. We are hopeful today that things will get better. We are hopeful today that we can get a whole we are hopeful today that the stimulus checks will be cut so that those who have been put out will be able to get into our home again. We are hopeful today that businesses that have gone out of business will come back into business. We are hopeful today that those who have no health care will get some kind of health care. Oh, we are hopeful today, God. Please help us to bring about the reality for every man.
goodness gracious. Hey, this is uh, this is the time of the year, folks. It's Angel Tree time. Amen. And uh, you know, despite despite the pandemic, despite the pandemic, we still have folks that's hurting. We still have young folks that have mamas and daddies that are incarcerated. Uh, and, and here's the unfortunate thing, December the 25th is still going to show up in our lives and their lives as well, right? That's right. That's right. And so we at St. Luke, we have been blessed because we are a giving church. Amen. Amen. Those of you all that don't know that, yeah. those of you that are online, you might not quite understand why St. Luke is still standing as tall as it is, is because every year our heart opens and we give to those that, guess what? Some of them we don't even know. Some parents we will never ever see. But we will have 32 young people that will show up at St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church to be blessed by the people of God. Amen. We have 18 families that are going to need some help. And so here's how we're going to help them. Sister Robinson will be back in the back as we always are this Sunday. And Sister Phoenix uh, will be in the back. And Sister Kayla will be back in the back, uh, you know, later, later in the month. And they're going to have angels. And there are going to be two types of angels. They're going to be angels for food baskets. All right. Because folks need to eat. Yeah. Okay? And so on those food basket angels, there are things identified that we want to provide for those families. The second type of angel will be a gift angel. And that angel is for the children. And there will be some things identified on that angel that that parent has said that they would like to give to their child. Hey, here's the unfortunate thing, folks. We all make bad decisions. All right. All right. Amen. I don't see enough heads nodding. Because guess what? We, we could, based on some of the decisions that we made, we could very well have been somewhere with white and on stripes on for the men. And straight white for the ladies. We very well could be there. But God showed grace and mercy and didn't allow those consequences that could have shown up in our lives to show up in our lives. And because of that, he said, well, guess what? Say, look, you're now here in a position to bless these families. All right. So here's what I need, folks. As you're walking out the door today, don't stick your hand in your pocket. Don't turn your head like you don't see her. Go on over to the table. Ask Sister Robinson, give me one of those angels. And you specify which one you want. If you want a food basket angel, we're going to give you a food basket angel. If you want a gift angel, we're going to give you a gift angel. And here's all that I ask. On the first Saturday of December, that is our deadline. Because the Angel Tree and Prison Ministry team will be here wrapping gifts, getting ready for our worship service on December the 12th. Amen. Amen. First Saturday in December. And I believe that's December the 5th because we have a great day on December the 12th. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> December the 5th, folks, I need you to bring those. That's the deadline to bring those gifts. But hey, guess what? You can bring them anytime and, and someone will be here to receive them so we can go ahead and wrap them. Thank you, St. Luke, for so much for what you've done. Thank you for what you are preparing to do. And we give praise and honor to God. Why? Because he's just that good. Amen. Thank you so much, Red Robinson, for that wonderful appeal. And we're going to make ourselves available for just, just, just that. Amen. Help me welcome the choir again. Help me welcome them again. And they come to mess up and come and pray for them.
Oh, Lord, our God, how we thank thee. The bounty that you give it to us this day. And the way you've given it to us by way of grace. Thank you. Thank you. For every trial, for every tribulation. For every valley you brought us through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the morning. For the sunshine of your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the graces of this hour. So speak to our hearts out of the revelation of your word. Not profane, nor revelation do we ask, but to the end that men might believe and be saved. This is your hour to speak, Lord. Touch someone today. Someone's heart might be broken, but you are a heart fixer. Someone's mind may be disturbed, but you are a mind regulator. But have thine own way today. Have your way. Speak to us. We want to get better. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. While you're standing, if you have your Bibles, turn to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I think I'll be the only one in here without a mask on today while I'm preaching. The rest of us, those of you online, we are doing our best to do our best to be good, not only good citizens, but be also good neighbors. Amen. Amen. So we encourage you to wear yours, wear gloves, wear masks, wear hats, whatever it might take. But we want to be good neighbors. James chapter 5. James chapter number 5. I want to pick up the reading at verse number 7. Verse number 7. And uh, a few of the following verses for the time we have together. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth of the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receive the earthly and uh, the early rather and latter rain. Be also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And uh, thus ends the reading of that portion of scripture. I'll be covering hopefully to verse number 12. But in the interest of time, I'll read those two verses in your hearing. Uh, today I want to talk about from this subject, soon is a shouting word. Soon. Shouting words. Say that with me. Soon is a shouting word. Amen. One of my favorite words, among others, is this word called soon. So many times it is used in the context of anticipation or or expectation. You ought to live your life uh, anticipating what God is going to do yeah, yeah. with expectation that he will do what he said he will do. Yeah. Sometimes soon represents waiting. Sometimes we have to wait for our souls. Souls don't come when we want them to come. But they're always timely and timeless. This word, soon to me, is an encouraging word. Whenever you read soon in the Bible, it ought to encourage you. It ought to uh, relax you. It's a relaxing word. That whatever I'm waiting for, it'll be here after a while. It won't be 
long. I believe, and maybe just maybe, God is trying to develop patience in all of us. Yeah. Yeah. As we have been praying for certain things for a long time, yeah. Yeah. and some of those prayers are not late, but being prepared for us, and the Lord is preparing us by way of patience. Yeah. Yeah. By way of allowing ourselves to grow and to make sure that we are ready for the answer. Sometimes I think God puts us in a holding pattern because we're not ready for the answer. All right. You might hurt yourself with what God has given you that's good. And so God has to allow us sometimes, I believe, and prepare us and puts us in a waiting posture. This, this text preaches itself. I really don't have to preach it. It's, it really preaches itself. Because... <clears throat> It, it, when you squeeze it, it oozes with the word soon. Soon. I, and and, and I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping by the time I finish this message that I'll have at least 10 of you all who will get excited about just one word today. Soon. I, 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 I like the way it sounds. I like the way it falls off your lips. Soon. No matter what I'm facing, no matter how bad things are, sooner or later, God is going to step right on in. And, uh, and so twice in, the, in this text, at least twice, he deals with this, uh, with the word and this event of Christ's imminent return. This is a doctrinal message that James penned for us, and it deals with the doctrine of the return of Christ Jesus. I really could preach this text backwards, um, but I won't do it today because it, whereas it is S of a word we call, we call eschatological in its, in its meaning, meaning we're studying the end times, uh, it, it is a current word for us who are Christian because we know that he did die on Friday. Yeah. He was buried and the third day morning he rose and the scripture says he's coming back again. Yeah. James points that out at least a couple of times for us in verse number seven and verse number eight that we ought to be anticipating his coming. Uh, and, and, you, and you know James, the brother of Jesus, if anybody ought to no, he, Jesus is, is his own brother. Yeah. Amen. I said, if anybody ought to know Jesus, it's a, it ought to be his own brother. Yeah. And if we are brothers and sisters in the Lord, we ought to know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that his word is his bond. And so James pins for us a word, what I call practical Christianity. Write that down. Practical Christianity. And that it tells us basically what we ought to be doing until he comes back again. What should we as believers be doing while Jesus is coming back again? Um, while in this pandemic I have become accustomed, thanks to Sister Hidget, of watching game shows. <laughs> That's about all in Western. I, I changed from Westerns. I've seen every episode of Gunsmoke, <laughs> Bonanza, yeah. Wagon Train, uh, Virginia. Yeah. I'm going to hit one, you know what I mean. Sometimes I'll, I'll go in the living room and, and she'll be watching game shows. Yeah. And, uh, one of my favorite game shows I come to know. I don't care too much for all of them, but one of them is called Jeopardy. Yeah. 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 Alex Trebek. Yeah. yeah. Anybody remember that? Yes, sir. It's um, originated in the early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. One of America's famous game shows. And the, uh, the object of the game is, I believe, to win the prizes, but uh, here, is, here are the rules. You, 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 you got three contestants. Help me somebody. Yeah. And you have uh, several categories to choose from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And um, when you choose a category, you tell them how much you want, 400, 500, 1,000 for that particular category. And, um, and then uh, when you choose a category, if it's your time, the answer pops up. The answer pops up. And then the contestant is required to give their uh, question to the answer and put it in a question form. And I sat there one time and I said, there ought to be a sermon in there somewhere. <laughs> you know, because I try to look for sermons yes, sir. everywhere I go. Uh -huh. So I said, self, there ought to be a sermon in there somewhere. Yes, sir. And my mind ran to this text. The category was time. Uh, the answer was, when Jesus is returning. And the question is, what is soon? Oh, y'all missed it, okay? Online worshipers, would y'all clap for me? I did you. Thank you. Thank you, California. Thank you. Thank you, Florida. Thank you, Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you. You got it, didn't you? He's coming back. month of the year it is, or what decade of the month, it is, whatever it is, all I know is he's coming back soon. I watched it long enough to know, Brother Shelton, that there are a lot of people who are in jeopardy today. As a matter of fact, some people are in double jeopardy. You know what double jeopardy is? Double jeopardy is is not getting the answer right on this side and missing seeing Jesus on the other side. Because you do know when he comes back again, it'll be too late. You got to get your business fixed with him now. Now. All I can tell you, brothers and sisters, who will listen to me is, I don't know when he's coming back. No man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall return. But I do know one thing, he's coming back soon. Question on the table is, are you ready? Let me talk to this side. The question on the table is, are you ready? So James says, this is about what we ought to be doing in the meantime. What do we do in the meantime? And I'm hoping some of you will get out of je double jeopardy. I'm hoping that, you're, that you will realize that I don't have as much time as I think I have. And I have wasted and frivolously wasted time after time after time away from God, and I need to come home to God today. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. that's your determination. Yeah. Because you've got a lot riding on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, your soul is riding on your decision to come to him now. Mm -hmm. And so James pins for us, he pins for us this whole idea of his second, second coming. Uh -huh. Yeah, he comes for us and tells us that he's on his way back. Yeah. Now, 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 chapter five opens up with James addressing what I call the, the spiritually arrogant. These are, indeed, verse 1 of chapter 5, he opens up um, dealing with rich men. Yeah, yeah. Yes, rich in goods, rich in uh, assets, rich in material things. So he said, now, here's what, I, what James said. I want you to consider the rich man. Verse 1. He said, all of those who think they got it going on, be careful. Be careful. Be careful now. Money can buy some things, but it can't buy everything. Money can buy bread, but it can't buy rest. Money can buy food, but it cannot buy an appetite. Are y'all hearing me? Oh yeah, money. Money can't buy everything. So he said, you, hey, you rich men. Hey, you. Well off folk, yeah. weep and howl. Yeah. You know what that word 
things we can have, he said, really, literally, mourn. Mourn. Don't be, don't think that you've got it going on to the point, he said, you really, your miseries uh, will come upon you before you know it. He said, it's so easy to be up today and down today. Am I making any sense? Yes, Lord. Those of you who are um, Kesara, Sarah kind of folk, whatever will be, will be. And you got 50 cents over your bills, and you won't speak to your neighbor. Spiritually arrogant. Be careful. This is what he pronounces over some of those who are like that. And look, at, look at verse 2. He says, your riches, your riches, in that particular case translated, your food, your goods, are corrupted. Your food is corrupted. And your clothes are moth-eaten. Come on, help me away if you can. In other words, your food... Uh, You'll never be able to take that freezer with you to heaven. Right. Ain't no canned goods in the cemetery. Y'all yeah. hearing that? Yeah. Be careful, he said. You can't, you can't take that with you. All right. No, you better not put your trust in your food supply yeah. or your closets filled. Well, no. Because your food will spoil. Intend to eat all those apples she bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I picked up one and one had a bad spot in it. Yes, sir. I had to throw that in the way. Uh -huh. I picked up another one that had another bad spot in it. Yeah, yeah. I threw that one away. I picked up another one. I didn't look for the bad spot. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get that <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. We, we're so guilty of wanting to hold on to bad stuff, we won't look for it. And go on and eat it anyway. Because we got a taste for apples. <laughs> Forgive me all that worship, but these folks say we haven't taken that medicine yet. in trouble because of your appetite. You've eaten some stuff with some worms in it. Yeah. Some bad places. Because you had a taste. Be careful. He says the things you like can get correct. Challenge for me, St. Luke knows this, challenge for me. Because I've been on a diet, it's a forced diet, so you know, I didn't go willingly. I, 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 I kicking and screaming, the doctor, my heart doctor said, you got to lose 100 pounds. I said, well, I'm 50. <laughs> because I know my appetite doesn't get depressed that quickly. I'm doing well. I was down 23 pounds so far. Yeah, that's the Lord. 23 pounds so far. But it has taught me one thing. I can live without all that food. All right. As yeah. a matter of fact, I can feel better yeah, 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 yeah. when I eat less. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. But, but, but I thought I felt better when I ate more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I started to build a trust in feeling better by eating more. Huh. But when you change your mindset, yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. and my trust in food supply, and work and just leave it to God's supply. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, your food can get corrupted, your garments can get moth-eaten. Yes, sir. Your food can get something that is negative. A moth is something that is normal. As many clothes as you all have in your closet, leave them there and don't wear them for several years. Gave wood, it'll be a little hole somewhere on that same job. I don't care how much you pay for it, you know. Don't wear it for a while. Just go on, just take it back down. 
stand up in there. Because you don't ever have to invite a moth into your house. <laughs> Bugs will come. <laughs> There's some people who've been bugging you in your life and you wonder where it came from. It's normal. It's normal for bugs to come. <laughs> Are you hearing that? And so James says, your comments can't save you. No matter how many you have, it is normal for them. Don't put your trust in your garments. Put your trust in your food, your goods. Don't put your trust in your clothes, your garments. But don't put your trust in your money, your gold. Because your gold will be corrupted. It is normal for gold. It is natural, rather, for gold to, to be corrupted. It is natural for, look what he said, your gold and silver is cankered. <laughs> How many times you got your rings packed back, and when you get them, the luster and the shine of those diamonds or gold or, or jewelry is, is faded somehow over time. It's not because somebody has been wearing it. Time has been wearing it. And if you look in the mirror, time has been wearing you too. No wonder your hair is crowned with the white cap of the spirit. No wonder your shoulders are scooped beneath the weight of the year. No wonder you can't find your glasses and they're on your eyes. Yeah. Go in the kitchen and forget what you went in there for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Tell, your, tell your neighbor. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful. So James, James warns them. He warns them. He says, yeah, don't, don't, trust, don't trust all of that. Your goods, your garments, your gold. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. Rust will get in those. Uh -huh. you, 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 you. Don't, don't think that these things you have right now will mean anything to you, anything to you in the last days. If you knew that the Lord was going to allow you to leave this planet today, would you worry about your freezer burning the food? If you know that tonight your soul would be required of you, would you be concerned about how many shoes that you have in the closet with the name of the shoe on the outside of the box. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. No, so this is what he said. There it is. I'm not making this up in verse 3. He said, you have reaped treasures together for the last days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the last days are coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, so you, and then, and then he goes into some next few verses, some that as to as the complaint uh, about what they're doing, but the condemnation of what they're doing between verse four, five, and six. You can read that when you get a chance. You can read it when you get a chance because you do know that that he sees what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You hire folk, he says, and you reap down your fields and you kept back up. You fraud, you defrauded people. God knows that. He knows you're guilty of fraud and cruelty and selfishness and condemnation of other folk and murder. All that's in there. Yes, sir. And we've got to pay for that on this side. Preach fast and I'm trying to yeah. You pay for that on this side while you're here. Yeah. You're a Christian. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So he gets us now what I've been trying to get through for the last 20 minutes. Be patient. Be patient. Almost parenthetically. This is what he says. Out of all that he said prior to that, what he says in verse number 7, on the porch of our text, he said, now Christians, you be patient. When a verse starts with a verb, you got to insert a noun, and the noun that you insert is you. Me. If I, were, if I were grammatically incorrect, I would say, me be patient. 
or I need to be patient. That's what, the, that's what James said. Me be patient. You be patient, therefore, brethren, because the Lord is returning. Yes, yeah, I can't get nobody to believe me. The Lord is be patient because he's on his way, on his way back. You know what patience is? Patience, and look at your definition, is humble acquiescence to the will of God. Wow. All right. Okay. It is humble acquiescence. That's a big word. Humble acquiescence to the will of God. Patience is says, I woke up this morning without a plan, and I don't have a plan until God gives me a plan. So whatever your plan is in my life today, Lord, I don't have one that I'm going to, that I'm going to supplant your plan for my life with. I don't have a plan that I'm going to replace your my life with. No, whatever your plan is for my life, that's my plan. I ain't got nothing to do with what you tell me to do or what you want me to do. Humble acquiescence is the will of God. It is it is it is Christ's will. To care for your sorrows. Preach fast to you. It is the will of the Lord to, to, to take care of what's bugging you. Yeah. 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 Many times, well, folks, hear me well. We try to take care of what's bugging us. Yes, we do. But did you not know that it's God's responsibility to take care of what's wrong with you? Yeah. As many pills as I take every day, my pills are good, but God is great. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't none of those pills I got that I take great. Uh -huh. Only God is great. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, because I know God is great because when I forget to take one, he still takes care of yes, us. I wish I had 10 people in here. Yeah. They're good. If you're diabetical, take your insulin. If you're diabolical, take the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> that's your medication. That's your med that's your medicine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many know you need your medication? Yeah. Yeah. Your job because you take your medication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He takes care of your sorrow. There's something else making happen. He takes care of your circumstances. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Ten people over there just shouting. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of my circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm so and listen, I'm so glad he took care of my circumstances because at some times in my life I can remember I was so broke I couldn't even pay attention. Yes, sir. That's broke when you can't pay attention. I mean ain't no change in an ashtray, ain't none of the sofa cushion, you look in all your pockets, ain't nothing there. All you need is a dollar, get a dollar worth of gas on pump two. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You know you got to get to work. You know you can't be late. You know you can't write no check. Because it's going to get to the bank before you can ever. I've been just down like that. I've just been that kind of room. And somehow or another, when I got to my job, I told the Lord, thank you. I didn't make it here on fumes, I made it here on faith. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You didn't make it to where you are on fumes, you made it on, yeah. on faith. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. This, this election stuff has taught us one thing. Yeah. I couldn't wait for yesterday. Yeah. I've been watching, I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of tired of the station, CNN, NNN, UN. Because every one of them tell me, just be patient. Every time we got this many votes, but just be patient. Oh, he's almost just be patient. Patient! I said, hey, I'm, lit, I'm learning, I'm tired, I'm tired. Being patient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm patient. He takes care of my circumstances. Yes, sir. He takes care of my trials. Yes, sir. He takes care of my trials. Yes, sir. When is he coming back? I don't know when. But can you tell somebody next to you when he's coming back? Oh, yeah. Soon. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. 
Oh, yeah. I close. I close. A little bit later. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Be patient, therefore, brother. How long shall we be patient? That is the verse 7. Until the coming of the Lord. Until he returns. And then he gives us some ocular illustrations. He said, Behold, the farmer. Your <coughs> King James says, husband man, actually farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I call farmer sower. sower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch the sower. Uh -huh. Have you ever noticed the farmer? I did some farming when I was younger and uh, in East Texas. I, I did some farming. I, that's one of the reasons why I have three degrees now, because I, I didn't want to make farming my profession. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad profession, don't get me wrong. I'm not down to denigrating farmers. I mean, need them. We can't eat without farmers. I just knew that farming was not for me. Say farming, farming. is not for me. Not for me. For Brother Reese, but it's not for me. <laughs> Amen. I'm not, I'm not a farmer. I've learned. i learned how. I never will forget. Can, can I take two minutes just to taste it? I never forget when my father taught me how to, how to plow. Didn't have a tractor, no down there. We had a mule that you Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. The biggest mule that I've ever seen in my life. And, but, but when I was when I started school, I was six, seven, somewhere in that area, maybe eight years old. My father uh, said, Boy, you gotta go to the field, huh? You, you've been working in the garden behind the house, but ain't no work in that. You gotta go where the work is, then the work is in the field. Uh -huh. You don't eat if you work in the garden. You gotta eat. We're gonna, we're gonna make some money off the field. And so I, I graduated from the garden to the field. I, I'm hoping that some of the members of this church will graduate from the garden.
And then we went home, fed old Bill before I ate. Right. Yeah. He did the work. <laughs> the husband man. No. And, and then the next moment, guess what we know? We go home, rest, sleep at night, but the next day we go right back out in the and all of the stuff we sowed that day, all the corn we planted, is already covered up, and I ain't seen nothing. And Daddy told me to go right back out there. I would have thought, I would have been encouraged if I had seen something come out the ground. But no, when you plant, it doesn't always come up when you want it to come up. So the lesson that I'm going to share with you that James talks about is, is you got to go back out there even though you don't see no change. Hey. Hey, even though you don't see no, no crop, you got to work until the crop comes up. Yes, and some people have quit because they didn't see nothing. They worked in church, they did this, they did that, but they didn't get to where they wanted to be. So you quit before your crop came in. Summer and latter rain. 
Oh, my brothers and sisters, the inner rain would come around to the Father around April or May. Yeah, yeah. But the latter rain would come about October and November. Yes, oh, y'all hear me? I'm sorry, it's just the opposite. The early rain would come about late uh -huh, December or early November. Yeah. But then the latter rain would come about uh, April or May. And so verse number eight reminds us the second time that uh, we ought to be patient. Is that what your Bible says? Be patient, uh -huh, established, grounded in your own hearts. And then he said it one more time, for the Lord is coming back again. And uh, I'm going to ask you one more time, when is he coming back again? And the people said, uh, soon. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I tell you what you ought to do. You ought to consider, in the next part, uh, consider the prophets. Uh -huh. Yeah, verse 10 said that we ought to consider the prophets are the spokesmen. He gives us examples of Old Testament and illustration uh, of prophets of old uh, and how they had uh, to wait. And uh, I only need about five or six of y'all to identify with these prophets that uh, you had to wait unwavering patience. Patience that will not uh, be waved at. Uh -huh. Look, uh, at some of the spokesmen that God gave us. First of all, uh, Jeremiah had uh, to wait on the Lord, uh, and he waited uh, by faith. Do I have a witness in here? He was persecuted, uh, and yet he was uh, persistent. He was uh, afflicted, uh, but yet he was uh, persistent. Uh, do I have any witnesses in here? He risked his life uh, for the sake of uh, the Lord. But maybe you forgot about Jeremiah. What about uh, Abel? Abel lost his life because uh, he died in faith. Uh huh. Yeah, Noah uh, built an ark because he learned to build uh, by faith. I ain't got no help in here. Abraham learned how to walk by faith. Uh huh. Let me just hurry. Jacob yeah, worshiped by faith. Uh -huh. Joseph uh, said uh, by faith. I, I ain't got no witnesses for Joseph. Moses, yeah, uh -huh. yes, uh, moved by faith. Uh -huh. Gideon uh, obeyed by faith. And uh, David uh, fought by faith. Samuel uh, walked by faith and talked by faith. Uh, Nehemiah stayed by faith. Uh -huh. Joshua led by faith. Daniel slept all night in the lion den by faith. Yeah, the Hebrew boys yeah, were cool and collected, and all of that was done by faith. And one of these old mornings, one of these He's going to call your name, and if he calls your name, you'll get up uh, by faith. You want to have a witness in here? And then he said, uh, not only watch the sower, and not only watch the spokesman, the last thing he said is, uh, watch the sufferer. I need 20 people uh, in this room who had to suffer some time. I need 21, I got 20, I need 21, uh, and the summer pain, uh, summer sickness, uh, summer persecution, uh, he said, well, uh, don't mind the wine, uh, Job is a good example uh, of how to suffer and be uh, saved. Do I have a witness in here? He persevered. He persevered when he lost his life. 
lost his children. Uh, he kept on keeping on. Uh, he lost his goods. Uh, he kept on keeping on. Uh, he waited. Until the same would come. Uh, his
God was still on the throne. Yeah. All that ain't no different is you were broke on New Year's Day. <laughs> and stayed broke the rest of the year. Because when you start the year, <laughs> those are church homes. Those are church homes. If you listen to us online, online today, this is, this is the day, that, this is probably the best day that you took, have a chance to tune in. Today is your, you in, you in for today. But this is the day you get a chance to say yes to the Lord. It's no accident that you tuned in today. It's not a chance. The Lord has you listen. The Lord put it on your heart to listen today because you, you think you had a lot of time left. Oh, you're young. You're young, you think you got plenty of time to get your life to the Lord. But boo boo, you don't have as much time as you think you have. So you need to give your life to the Lord right at your computer, right on your cell phone. If you're in this room, you need to come down the closest out to you. All you got to do is say, Come into my life, save me, make me who you want me to be. You promise to do that. The scripture says to save you. If you'll do that today, He'll love you and save you. You'll be ready.
and said yes to you, to your will and to your way. Pray for strength for them. Pray that you guide them each and every day of their life. Thank you for your testimonies. Thank you, O God, for them. Yes. We give you glory for everything. And thank you for these who come. We come out in the middle of a pandemic to say, Lord, we are urgently awaiting Thank you for blessing us with the privilege and strength to come today. We pray for those who could not come. We pray for those who are listening to me today. Touch their hearts, every one of them, Lord. We know you're coming back soon and we want to be ready for it. Let none be lost. Let's hear this message today. Let none be lost. Let none be lost today because you saved me from the unbelief. Thank you, Lord.